Hi, everybody. Welcome to our four easy ways to train and onboard drivers online for free webinar. The introduction of our new training and testing library and other onboarding services that we've talked about recently that help drivers more easily complete forms and upload documents and confirm application updates remotely has piqued a lot of interest. So we're just excited to be hosting this follow-up webinar to show you in more detail how all the pieces kind of work together. So you can see just exactly how easy we've made it to move your orientation classes online. So before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that this webinar will be recorded and sent to you within the next 24 hours. So don't worry if you get interrupted or you have to jump off the call, um, you'll get the recording so your team, you and your team can review it later. And additionally, just feel free to ask any questions you like at any time during the presentation. You can do so using the text box under the questions section in your GoToWebinar panel. And we're not, if we're not able to get to those right away, we'll try at the end of the webinar. And even then, if we can't get to them, we'll email you afterwards. Okay, next slide. Thank you. Um, so, uh, my name is Leah Kelly. I'm joined today by my Penn Street friends, Marilyn Serber and Elizabeth Sante. We also have a special client guest with us today on the call, which is Casey Bellman. He's the Executive Vice President of HR and Recruiting at HMD Trucking. And Casey's been a 10th Street client for many years with several different carriers. He'll be sharing his experience on how our, mo our mobile onboarding services have really helped him move his company forward. So he'll be talking toward the end of our call right after Marilyn's demo. So just be sure to stick around for that. On the agenda today, we have why the ability to onboard drivers remotely is now more important than ever before. We have what it looks like to onboard a driver from, on, from application to hire using our four easy mobile onboarding solutions that we're offering for free for 90 days. And then we're gonna give a live demonstration of the onboarding. Uh, then we'll talk to Casey and he'll tell us about his experience with our onboarding services and how they've helped him. And then we'll tell you how you can get started with free driver onboarding for 90 days as well. Next. Thanks. Okay, so let's start with the with why, you know, why the ability to onboard drivers remotely is so important. I mean, obviously, advancing your onboarding progress or process so that they can accommodate periods of times when we'll need to respect social distancing practices is now more important than ever. We all value drivers and the important function they serve in our society. We want to work together to keep the transportation industry and the community as a whole safe and slow the spread of the, of the COVID while we propel our companies forward. So to help carriers hire drivers safely and get them on the road faster, carriers can now adopt these solutions that make remote onboarding possible. So just making these services free to our clients for 90 days just helps drivers more, more quickly prepare for their work and it shortens time, if any time spent in orientation class, and it also helps reduce the risk of spread. So, but besides the current health threat, you, making your onboarding mobile brings you lots of additional benefits. The onboarding experience is your driver's first impression of your company, and then and first impressions play a big role in retention. In fact, according to CCJ, one third of new driver hires actually quit in 90 days and half within the first six months of starting a new job. So that's huge. When you lose quality people you've already put time, money, and effort into, you lose all that time, money, and effort, and you're just starting back at zero all the time. So orientation classes are what drivers dislike the most, at least that's what they reported to a conversion interactive, interactive agency survey. Um, they, that's what they dislike the most about changing jobs. So a driver's experience is everything. And if you can design a robust onboarding strategy that protects your marketing and recruiting investment by teaching your new driving team everything they need to know to be successful, um, it makes them more likely to stay around long-term and less likely to become another turnover stat. Okay, next, please. So we're gonna walk you through what it looks like to go from onboarding, uh, to onboard drivers from application to hire. And so in a minute, Marilyn's gonna walk us through that whole thing. She's gonna show what the recruiter would need to do and then what the driver sees it well. So she'll be showing both sides of it. So drivers will use our, just for those who aren't familiar with it yet, Drivers will use our free Driver Pulse app to complete their driver their onboarding requirements, which three out of four drivers already have downloaded on their phones. Um, and just for those who don't know, the Driver Pulse app was created just to help bridge drivers and recruiters together. It keeps drivers engaged in the recruiting and the onboarding processes. 
it expedites hiring and it makes communication better and it just helps your drivers become more successful and happier there's different ways that they can communicate issues and surveys and all these good things to get feedback which all help with retention and then recruiters on the other hand just stay within their dashboard and they can complete everything the entire onboarding process through express okay so before i let her go I just wanted to give you a quick overview of each of the services we're offering here for free. So to start, uh, confirmation and tele-app. I mean, recruiters spend a lot of time validating applications, a lot of, mostly because a lot of them just contain discrepancies. In most cases, it's not because the applicant, you know, tries to falsify information, but they just change jobs, you know, six months on average, and a lot of details get forgotten. But uh, confirmation IntelliJap and tele-app is a recruiting and onboarding tool that just kind of removes the back and forth drivers and recruiters experience when updating the driver's application. Um, and then once all the applications are made, they, it sends it to the, the recruiter modified version to the driver and they can review it, confirm it and sign it um, with their smart device. And then it's returned back to their driver's file. So it just makes it a lot faster. Next is the second thing is we have our document uploader, which just, is another tool that makes it really easy for drivers to share their documents from their mobile devices instead of making copies or mailing information to you. So they just would take a photo of their documents, like a CDL or S, you know, social security card, their insurance with their devices. And then our software uploads it directly into their DQF file. So it's stored there safely and it uh, meets, you know, satisfies DQF regulations and requirements. Next is the third way you can train and onboard your drivers for free is using forms capture this lets drivers complete digital forms from their mobile devices and the cool thing is we offer countless standard dot tax for dot and tax forms so you've got the i9 w4 annual review all the state income taxes uh seven seven day log and we also include a, a covid 19 travel disclosure form now to help in protecting people from the from this public health threat um, on-site driver orientation can get bogged down by a lot of paperwork usually, which means um, just, you know, it's oftentimes requesting the same information from a driver that they already provided during their application process. But Forms Capture picks up where the Intel app left off. So it auto-populates a lot of those orientation forms with information that was already entered on the application. So that just relieves the drivers from the burden of entering information more than once, and it just also expedites form filling. It ensures consistency and response, um, and you can even put validations in place to make sure drivers actually fill out all the information and nothing's left blank. And then our last one, the most, the newest one, is the fourth way to train, uh, sorry, this is a training content library. This way you can train and onboard your drivers for free, uh, we've had a lot, of, a lot of clients ask us over the years for training content with the ability to test drivers afterwards. And so we're super excited to finally we have this to offer. Uh, deploying training materials to drivers allows for new drivers to come armed with the necessary uh, knowledge to get into their trucks more quickly. And it enables carriers to accelerate the orientation process, um, support social distancing efforts, and it lets drivers complete training and testing from the convenience of their mobile device. So it makes for a more meaningful onboarding experience. Our, our, uh, our library comes with an interactive interface, so it's engaging for drivers. It enables you to train and test your drivers remotely, and it has dozens of titles, which we'll go into soon. Um, Marilyn's gonna show us how that works, but we have titles like defensive driving, hours of service, backing, rollovers, and we're adding more every week. So I actually have a link to a training content library cut sheet here, and I'm gonna just send it right now in the chat. So you can click on that, um, and you can see how that works basically it's going to give you a listing of all of the library titles that we have right now as well as kind of what an onboarding process might look for you and then next is is where i pass it to marilyn so she's going to walk us through that's our next on stage. That's our next, next on stage <laughs> right. is Casey. But first, it's good. we're going to walk through what our mobile onboarding looks like from the carrier's perspective in Express, and then what the driver sees on the Pulse app as well. Thank you, Leah. 
So um, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this today because I do think um, moving your onboarding process online is a game changer for your organization, for your recruiters and your orientation folks, and then also for the driver experience as Leah was referencing and really helping a driver have confidence in your organization from their first interaction and consistency um, with where you're asking drivers to go to um, receive information and sign off on information. So um, it's very exciting too as a former recruiter and safety person to think about being able to do everything from your dashboard right where you kind of live and work all day every day. And so starting with that confirmation and tele app, um, let's just talk through that. You know, drivers fill out Intella apps and we love them because they are um, they're more complete than a traditional application, but a lot of times there are, as Leah referenced, um, some discrepancies in information or something you just might even have to add their last employer or any of those things. And so you have the ability here um, to update um, a driver's application for them and then send it to them. So you, if you had to add something, you know, you could add um, maybe the terminal that they were applying to is different. So you could update that and change that they were applying to a different terminal. And then you would send that application to them to sign off on. And how you would do that is just by adding a process here. Going down to the process view. Um, to the driver portal um, and lo we're logged into our driver portal every driver um, if they have this is how they'll access their information and it's really easy they don't have to remember any unique information it's their last name their date of birth and their social which hopefully all drivers remember which I really particularly like because it's not any unique information. And you can see here, this task is there for them to complete as a confirmation Intel app. And it says, you know, they can review it here. You can see the instructions are very clear. And then just, yes, this information is correct. And if it's not correct, you can say, no, it's not correct. So this is very easy for the driver to review right on their phone, sign it, save it. Thanks, you finished this task. And this sends it back to the recruiter and then they have an updated application and they're ready to move on um, with the next stage of their process. So as you can see, it's very simple from the recruiter's perspective and also from the driver's perspective. And if we reload here, and we go back into Andy, we'll be able to see when that's been completed as well. Go to our work list. Andy Anderson. And you can see right there, it's finished. And so you, it was set in process when we were just here and now it says finish. So it's really literally that fast and that quickly that you can know when a driver has done something. Um, the second thing we have um, from a doc uploader, um, as Leah was mentioning, you know, I remember days where you were, you know, faxing things to drivers at truck stops and they were having to go to a truck stop and fax it back or even, you know, emails and attachments. Well, this kind of takes all of that um, away from them and you know it makes it so easy for them to do from their phone wherever they are um, and so again you can see the documents here on the document tab and you can see what documents they already are present for a driver um, and then again you're going to go to your process tab and you're going to add a process
and we want um, an upload CDL. Again, we do the course date, and then we finish it there. And we again, as we see that that's in progress, and we can go back out here. And here, this is actually um, our driver pulse view. This is what the driver sees when they are working from the driver pulse app. So here is their driver portal. If they don't have the app downloaded um, and they want to do something on a desktop or something like that, then this is what their view will look like. But from their phone, this is what their view looks like. So you can see here how clean it is and you can go to their tasks. It's going to ask them to confirm that that's them. And you can see here where they're oh, let me see down. Sorry, can go back here. To their documents, send documents, and they can see their CDL. They can delete it. They can add a document um, from right here from the desk. You know, this goes to my desktop. Um, obviously, from their phone, they can choose a phone. We can just select here, whatever this is, open it and close. And it's not going to let me add it because it's not a JPEG, but you can see here, okay, I'm going to add my medical card and it's just that simple. So the process works that, that quickly and that simple for the driver. Um, forms is really the same idea. Um, as Leah said, we have a lot of free forms. Um, that are your standard forms that you think of when you think about hiring a driver um, and getting them onboarded. And then we also have the ability to add custom forms for you um, to complete really your whole, what I would call your driver packet. And again, it's the same thing. Everything is going through your process tab and you're adding your process, scheduling communications, but you're selecting um, driver forms. Um, you have the ability to customize this, like if you want to assign certain items pre-hire that you want them to fill out um, while it's in the recruiting process or some things once you've scheduled them for orientation, you know, you have the ability to build in some of your custom automation here with your due date and then you're finishing it um, and it's that simple. You can see there um, and you can see, we go back here, you can see the form. Retrieving the form. Okay, so here's your W-4. We want to fill it out. Let's see if we can do this. We're signing it and saving it. I didn't enter all the required information. So it was really easy for me to go back and see, oh, that's what was missing. See if we got it all this time. And it's that simple. The driver has the, op you know, the opportunity, they fill out their W-4, they confirm that's what they want. Finish and then that form is completed. So how simple was that um, from if you think about a paperwork perspective and having drivers fill out all of the paperwork that they have to complete for training, you know, to get hired with your company, um, all of the forms can be completed in that simple format. And you saw how clean it was and easy it was and self-explanatory so that the driver could fill it out. And a lot of folks are choosing to have drivers fill this out before they get to orientation so they're not spending time filling out that paperwork in orientation and Casey's going to talk to us about that a little bit more later. So as Leah was saying, we are really excited to launch our driver training library. We've been working on this for a while. A lot of clients have asked for it. Um, I'm really excited about it because we've been spending a lot of time and we've been able to create um, real interactive content for drivers and we have um, 28 titles that are available now and as Leah said, we are working every week to add new titles to that library so that you can use um, our training content if you would like. 
um, to supplement your orientation and really do kind of a pre-orientation, get some of those videos out of the way, um, either before the drivers get there or, you know, as part of your orientation process when they're in class or right now, as a lot of uh, companies are doing remote orientations, it really helps facilitate that. So we're back to adding another process. And we are 10th Street training content. Again, what is your due date? And then we're gonna go out here to our driver pulse. And this is what a driver, I just wanna reiterate, this pulse view is what a driver would see if they're on their phone. And I wanted to go over these courses. So we have really spent a lot of time trying to be thoughtful about our courses and what we're creating. Um, you know, we know things that are required like drug and alcohol, um, we have defensive driving, CSA, we have the different basics, um, we have seat belts, and we have a space management, a lot of different courses that were designed with you in mind. Um, Leah put that link out there. And so really, um, the titles that we've you know, done first are those titles that we think um, clients need to supplement their orientation or replace some of those general topics that you might be teaching in orientation, like pre-trip, post-trip, um, roadside inspections, those types of things. So if you go into a training course and select it here, you can see this is what the course, all the courses look like. They're all interactive and you can start your course. Who is subject to DOT testing? What I really um, enjoy about this style is that it gives um, drivers a chance to digest the information um, in a format that meets different needs and also to where they can stop and go. Um, we've divided it up and so drivers can stop in different sections and come back to them and it's going to take them right back to where they were. So who's subject to DOT testing. You can also download documents from here. So several courses we have um, different terms and definitions or appendixes or link out to um, fe federal websites that might help. And so it's really nice in this training format to be able to offer that. And I'm gonna play some of this here for you. The, um, what we also like about it is the audio doesn't start automatically. So again, we know adults learn differently. So they can read, they can listen, they can do both. But I am gonna start this here so you can hear it. Why are safety sensitive employees tested? The short answer is for the safety of the traveling public, coworkers and yourself. The longer answer is that the United States Congress recognized the need for a drug and alcohol free transportation industry and in 1991 passed the Omnibus Transportation Employee Testing Act requiring DOT agencies to implement drug and alcohol testing of safety sensitive transportation employees. The Omnibus Act's testing requirements do not apply to PHMSA with, within DOT the Office of the Secretary's Office of Drug and Alcohol Policy and Compliance publishes rules on how to conduct those tests, what procedures to use when testing, and how to return an employee to a safety sensitive duties. Encompassed in 49 Code of Federal Regulations, Part 40, ODAPC publishes and provides authoritative interpretations of these rules. DOT agencies in the U.S. Coast Guard write industry specific regulations spelling out who is subject to testing and when and in what situations. Industry employers implement the regulations that apply to them. The benefit to all employees affected by DOT regulations is that each agency's regulations must adhere to DOT's testing procedures found in 49 CFR Part 40, commonly known as Part 40. For example, you may work in the rail industry and later work in the motor carrier industry, but the procedures for collecting, testing, and reporting of your tests will be the same under Part 40. And so, as you can see, it kind of it, it um, forces, if you will, engagement with the material in order to move from section to section. And then there's quizzes at each section. So you will never go 
longer than a minute or two without having um, a quiz. So we can read our question here. Anyone performing tasks defined by the U.S. Department of Transportation as safety sensitive, such as working on pipelines, driving a truck, operating a ferry or a train, or repairing an airplane is subject to DOT workplace drug and alcohol testing. And it scores it right there in real time. And you do have to pass the quiz in order to move on to the next section. And then you just click and you move on to the next section. And here's part of other interaction. Driver pulse is reloading. Um, is that? Get back into it. Let's go back here into our drug and alcohol. Do I So as you can see, it didn't it didn't take us back to the beginning. It took us back here, um, where we were. What does the DOT test for? I wanted to show you guys this: how you can see the content interacts differently. So this is telling us what. It tests for, and again, you see that kind of forced interaction, um, different, and it won't let you move on until you've clicked all of the arrows. See if we missed any, and now we can continue. That shows up as red. Um, so I'm going to go back out to the tasks and show you um, a different title, so you can see. But this is our drug and alcohol course, and it continues with this pattern. Reloading, going back to our tasks. And let's look at um, space management. Here. Welcome to your space management training course. Managing your space properly is key to your success as a professional truck driver. It is imperative that you are always aware of the space between you and the vehicle in front of you. The Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration defines following too closely as situations in which one vehicle is following another vehicle so closely that even if the following driver is attentive to the actions of the vehicle ahead, he or she could not avoid a collision in the circumstances when the driver in front breaks suddenly. In addition to providing enough stopping time, proper following distance allows for more time to make good, well-planned decisions and affords other drivers the opportunity to scan the sides, look far enough ahead, and view the vehicle immediately in front. The large truck crash causation study reported that 5% of truck crashes occurred when the commercial motor vehicle driver was following the lead vehicle too closely. Go through here, double your following distance. And then you have a quiz. And then once you take your quiz, and this is the end of the course, this is a shorter course, it gives you a notice here. And then you get your completion. Congratulations, you success, successfully completed this course. And then that is when the certificate is added to a driver's file and that task will be removed from the list.
and if we go back over into our dash dashboard and look at from a recruiter's perspective or an orientation person's perspective if we look at the driver tasks view you know we can see what has been completed and what hasn't been completed so let's see if we go here and go back into andy let's see if it will show that completion but you get the gist that you can continue you can manage your driver and everything that's happening with that driver from the time you complete their application until they get to to your orientation or through your orientation depending on how you want to assign those documents and videos or if you're doing it while they're there you can still see that so you can see what what they've done what they've uploaded and all of the different forms here all in this clean view that shows everything that's happening and again we wanted to make sure that everybody understands how clean it is from a driver's perspective for them to be able to do all of those things on their phone and what they see so i am now um, going to hand it back over i'm going to get out of this and hand it back over to leah who is going to introduce Casey for us. Okay, thanks so much, Marilyn. Great job. Um, just to Thank be you. clear, I wanted to just hit on a point. Whenever Marilyn was walking through each of the four things that she scheduled, you know, she did the confirmation Intel app and then uh, document uploader and forms and then the video. You can actually, she did that in four different process steps, but you can actually combine that into one. I mean, it can be really easy and fast. She just broke it out so that you could see how it would work for each piece. So just so we're clear there. Okay, so without further ado, our next big star on our stage is our special guest, Casey Bellman. He's our he's a client. He joined us on this webinar so he could share his story about the improvements that his company, uh, HMD Trucking, saw when they made the switch to mobile on onboarding. So Casey is the Executive Vice President of HR and Recruiting at HMD Trucking, but I know he's worked for several other carriers over the course of his career and has been a 10 Street user for many years. Casey, remind us how long you've been with 10th Street or using 10th Street. I am coming up on 10 years. 10 years, great. Okay, well, thanks so much for joining us. You can just, I'll just let you tell your story however you would like to tell it. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Uh, the, the curtain um, was uh, definitely not needed, but I appreciate that. Um, luckily, <laughs> you used a, a picture that's about 10 years old, too, so I look a lot uh, older at this point, too. A lot more a lot more gray hair showing up at this point. So, um, you know, today's uh, current environment in the trucking industry, as, as well as the world, has um, made us look at new ways of trying to onboard drivers quickly. Um, and and luckily, I, I've had quite a bit of a jump on this uh, for the last several years. I've been working for carriers that have all used 10th Street uh, for the most part and have uh, used uh, the forms capture function um, at all the carriers I've worked at previously that use 10th Street, which has always helped out in expediting orientation. Um, but the the training ability to to be able to use either you know the new um, 10th Street training which looks great I just uh, got to see that yesterday for the first time and excited to to possibly be possibly be using that but to also use third parties that offer training material and if you're a decision maker at your company right now you're probably getting bombarded with third parties that are offering you some sort of mobile training or uh, off-site training program I know my inbox every day is is filling up with those so luckily for for many years I've been using those and instituted that immediately when I came to HMD last summer uh, utilizing a third party currently that that uses videos uh, and also questionnaires at the end similar to what we saw in the in the demo where the driver must complete it uh, before they can get to the next um, module and uh, one of the things that uh, I've used this not only at HMD trucking but also at Roadrunner previously was uh, this really helped in recruiting to um, 
help us understand show rates and how drivers were uh, less likely to ghost us or not show up, uh, avoid us for some reason. Uh, because if they're going to invest all this time off-site in doing forms and uh, digital training in some way on their cell phones or on their laptops or tablets at home or on the road and you're in the competitor's truck, um, if they're spending hours finishing uh, some of these things that they were most likely doing in your classroom previously, uh, it's very likely that it, in a good sign on a Friday when you're making your confirmation calls to see if the driver's going to show up on Monday, that when you are able to right there in the dashboard see that the driver has finished all the training material and has pre-filled out all your documents that you've asked them to and all the um, personal documents have been uploaded that's a really comfortable warm feeling inside for a recruiter to know that wow you you know they can praise the driver to say hey because of, you did all this work ahead of time uh, when you show up on Monday you know all we're gonna have to do is a very basic to get you on the road and that is really what happened at HMD just to give you some insight I mean, we had a, a very comprehensive uh, long drawn-out three-day orientation process when I came here and uh, just you know viewing it seeing what was gone over and and the slow pace that it was I saw a lot of frustration from the drivers a lot of frustration from the administrative staff that were uh, working uh, you know back and forth with handing paperwork back and forth and and all the things that were incomplete or coming in incomplete and uh, what this did when you know I had experience from previous carriers that, that did this I could just come right in set up the third party for training uh, also set up the forms capture uh, I do utilize uh, several custom forms that are very, very cheap to have uh, 10th Street create for you. It's just a one-time uh, fee based on how involved the form is. The more spaces that need to be filled out, the more expensive the form's going to be. Uh, but if you have just really quick policy documents that I suggest you make, you know, very short and sweet that don't necessarily have to be filled out in front of orientation uh, classes, uh, just basic policies that you have, maybe like a firearm po policy that you want to make sure drivers are aware of before they show up and things of that nature. Just put a really uh, short and sweet signature uh, printed name and date and that's all you need and that form alone probably would only cost you you know fifty dollars to have uh, 10th street fill out uh, you know one time and you'd never have to have it done again unless you changed your policy and then you'd have to uh, weigh into the cost on that but it far out exceeds the benefit um, you know is is greatly um, there based on the fact that you're spending that one time and now you can always have those forms ready as soon as the driver is uh, there for orientation and your uh, safety people or your admin people can uh, review those pre-orientation or during orientation and get the driver on the road quickly. Uh, but back to uh, how our orientations were, were uh, managed previously, you know, mostly safety involved and then some payroll and then a little bit of operations. And, you know, it wasn't clearly defined who had to do what when. So um, it was it was very clear to me that the task was uh, going to have to be to, um, you know, schedule certain times of the day to have certain people from each department come in and, and talk to the driver. But what we were seeing is we were burying these drivers in paperwork. So what we were able to do is just get all the uh, free 10th Street forms that, that she was mentioning, W-9 or I-9 or W-4 forms, have all those filled out pre-orientation uh, to um, – to get those out of the way and just start, you know, handing those off to payroll before the driver shows up. And and the others were the, uh, a lot of the policies that we were going over when I read through them really didn't need to be gone over with the driver in person. A few did. Uh, it's very important that you get whites of the eye on some of your policies that you're going over with drivers and and, and that they get to sit down with operations and, and other departments to make sure that their things are clearly defined. But a lot of them were just basic trucking industry type policies that you know, we were spending a lot of time going over. So, you know, when we did go in and create those digital forms, we were able to, you know, based on the driver tape, whether we were hiring a driver for 1099 or hiring a driver for uh, W-2, we were able to create specific courses in there to where uh, she showed us in the scheduling communications. We could choose a specific, you know, 1099 driver and send him all the forms he needed uh, or, or she needed. And then the same for the W-2, that driver received specific forms 
based on their driver type. And, and that really made us efficient in that case. And then the, the really cool thing that made us super efficient is um, we do have uh, integration through our third party that we're using for our video training right now and, and integration through 10th Street where it was automated um, that those videos were sent to the driver as soon as we put an orientation date tag in the driver's file. So that subject was on the phone with the driver, uh, or the recruiter, I'm sorry, was on the phone with that subject and, and the driver, and they were able to, you know, nail down an orientation date for a certain day of the week. And as they clicked on the orientation date, they were, as the recruiter did that, they could also tell the driver, check your email within the next hour. You are going to get a, a portal um, link to go to so that you can go ahead and start doing our training material right away. And, you know, that was eight, nine months ago when we started doing that. Now today, it's way more relevant because the drivers are appreciating it uh, much more because they can get through orientation a lot quicker. And uh, that that was the goal too, uh, to eliminate what was a three-day class uh, or three days of sometimes wasted time, sometimes unorganized chaos, uh, turned into really six hours tops now in in our office. Uh, and, and even in that six hours, they're spending uh, one or two hours going over trucks, uh, doing road tests, um, doing yard walk arounds to understand how we how our processes and procedures work in our yard and then the rest of really two to three hours of the time is just sitting down with operations in the in the orientation room one-on-one -on -one, sitting down with safety managers and leaders one-on-one -on -one, and us uh, setting them up on all the, uh, the the things that we use the, the processes that we use so uh, we were able to cut our cost and you know I'm always looking at a return on investment when I'm gonna you know sign a contract or go in go in with someone as a third party and and we were able to uh, really at this point uh, calculate that we were gonna save about four hundred thousand dollars a year just on fixed costs that we had uh, per driver in the orientation room for three days and and to be able to get that down to one day uh, really I mean at that point was able to fund my entire you know recruiting salary operation you know everything that was going on with the recruiting aspect of it was easily paid for just by those savings and uh, that was really exciting too to to just have a lot of automation in place have a lot of just specific tasks done in place so that uh, and really, we gained the respect of safety and operations very quickly because uh, when these new drivers were coming in and everything was completed, minus a few face-to-face -face policies, uh, you know, they, you know, we were creating revenue uh, for two extra days now. Uh, we were getting uh, drivers happier because they saw that we valued their time and, and not just took up three days of, of orientation time just to just so that they could you know eat a Jimmy John sandwich for three days and and stay in a you know a, a two-star motel you know it was more of a you know this company means business I'm coming here either the day of or the night before and uh, they had me on a load the next afternoon and um, that that really um, uh, got everyone together not only in the office but then drivers were really appreciative of that too and uh, it's really improved things and and now with social distancing and we're still recruiting here every day so um, drivers have really respected that because uh, we're limiting their access to the building we're eliminating their we're uh, limiting their time in the office which they appreciate as well and they can get in the truck and on the road quickly and they, they're really just here to make money so that's that's what we were able to do with that all possible because of uh, 10th street and the integration with third parties and um, you know just a little bit of setup on our end and, and your uh, rep or your advisor is going to be able to walk you through all you need to do to uh, to get those things together and um, there every time I uh, try to add more or try to try to do more it seems like 10 streets adding even more to um, be able to make that even easier uh, and, and add more things like this new training uh, system that they're going to have internally. I mean, that's going to be a great opportunity for a lot of you if you're not using this already to um, just start using uh, their system and, um, and and really shorten the time that your drivers are watching JJ Keller videos and and just spending you know six seven eight hours a day in the in the office just watching videos. So this is uh, the new day and age where you know a lot of people are working from home. Many of you probably are working from home, and uh, 
the driver doesn't get the luxury of working from home. So uh, if you can put them to work with with training and, and pre-hire stuff, uh, great. That's, you know, if they can do it on their lazy boy or if they can do it in the competitor's truck, uh, please put them to work on that. And uh, from there, you will see a huge return on that investment. So that, that's that been the biggest success story for us. Um, we've, we've been eliminating a lot of ghosting because we've been monitoring these things as they are getting done and 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 then everyone being, uh, you know, in one, um, one mindset here at the office has really helped us um, just be a, a lot more professional to the driver. They get a, a red carpet ceremony, but they get it very quickly and uh, they appreciate that. And, uh, and we definitely, uh, are thankful for Tensory to be able to to get to that level because of them. And uh, that's, I think, all I have, Leah. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Casey. That was that was great. That was very helpful. Um, I hope that everybody heard, you know, I, I just, if anybody has any questions about, about that or wants to talk to Casey, I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you. Um, Marilyn, did you have anything to add? No, just um, thank you, Casey. I think it was it's so great to hear from a client's perspective, you know, every how you have implemented the services and um, how it's saving you money. And I think um, all of us, you know, all of you guys at a carrier, you know, can take those factors into consideration for yourself to calculate how much money you could save, you know, by saying how much money are you spending um, on those things that Casey mentioned and do that calculation. And I think, you know, Casey, we talked a little bit about this on yesterday's webinar is I know, you know, coming from a carrier where we had to change processes and implement different things, the hardest thing about all of this is really just changing your processes. And so um, I think right now is a great time because it's, first of all, it's free for 90 days, so that's great. But also a lot of uh, folks are hiring less drivers. So you have a little, bit of time maybe to spend, you know, looking at some of those processes. And so Casey, I would just ask, what would, would you agree with that as far as like the hardest part is really just changing your process? Yeah, every carrier I've had um, worked with and set these um, items up with has has always struggled to get rid of the paper aspect. You know, it's really hard to tell someone in safety that's that's been there for 20 years that um, you no longer want them to re you know, go through and put paper files together. It's really relying on the digital aspect of this. Uh, if you are um, just unable to uh, connect, disconnect from uh, paper and, and printing and things like that, then this probably won't work for you. But if your acceptance of today's digital formats and, and how easy it is to communicate through drivers, through the Pulse uh, app and uh, all the communication that you can do back and forth with them, if you're willing to do that, then this is going to be, you know, the, the platform for you. Uh, but certainly not for those that, you know, just cannot uh, pull away from that that dreaded print button. Yeah. yeah, and you know, right now it's interesting because we are being forced to evaluate how we do things now and like moving everything online, um, besides just streamlining processes, it also helps you um, in times like this, you know, if some if a driver were to have a, a really bad accident and you're, you know, the driver's file is locked in a cabinet in a closed office, then that's, you know, going to be delay the time that you can get to your office and evaluate that driver or evaluate what's happening. And so there are some real, real-time benefits, you know, for, from a safety perspective and recruiting perspective and from having all of the information on your drivers at your fingertips um, and being able to access those from wherever you are. So, so yeah, yes. And like Casey said, these are really easy, quick. We don't require a lot of information from you. It's, it takes a, set, a couple of days to set these up. So, you know, you can get these set up and have 90 days to test them out for free before you have to worry about anything. And I think you'll, you know, find a huge improvement performance and uh, increased efficiencies. So, so, uh, with the most beautiful said, part was we were dealing with so many incomplete forms or drivers that were struggling with filling out forms. So this process like forces them to fill out everything. And it's very clear, like she showed us in the demo, that there is something missing. It highlights it. Um, they're going to need um, to finish that. 
only a few times since we've created these forms have we had a driver that just struggled to a point where they needed us to walk through those forms with them but i will tell you 99 percent of your drivers are going to have these forms uh filled out before they arrive but if you know if you're not pushing them they may not but if you're uh, on the phone with them regularly like you should be as a recruiter and just following up with them daily um, and, and reminding them of completing those forms, that they will be 100%. So if they're in the DQF, they're done. You know, they're not, it's not partially done. And that's what safety and operations loved at that point was, wow, we're actually getting completed forms and we're getting them before they show up. That was one of our hardest uh, uh, things to, um, to deal with. And, and it was easily fixed in minutes. Oh, good. I'm so glad you said that, actually, because we have a several questions on here where people were, I think a lot of their concern is how, you know, how, how readily, or how easily are the drivers going to be able to adapt to doing things online or doing things through, through their mobile. And like we'd, we'd said before, we have, it. we show in our data about three out of every four drivers already has this app downloaded on their phone. And like Casey said, it really isn't as big of a deal, I think, as people worry about it being. Drivers are able to just come in and and complete these documents. It's real straightforward and simple and and so good. I'm glad you hit on that point. Yes, okay, thanks, so guys. let's move to some questions. If you want to go to the next slide. Thanks again, Casey. And if you have questions for Casey, just go ahead and send them in. I, I see a few right now. So keep if you have anything for Casey, we will be happy to ask him. All right, so just before we get into our Q&A, just to give a really high level of our total onboarding solution, I've listed them all here. We have the items that we talked about for, that are free for 90 days are in blue. We discussed those on the webinar. Um, and then we also have an electronic chain of custody, PulseMD, that gives you a custody, a chain of, an electric, electronic chain of custody solution for drug and physicals. And then we've got Greyhound integration for when we're up and traveling again. And then issues and surveys, which I kind of mentioned earlier, which is more of an engagement tool that lets your drivers give feedback and helps in retention. So for more information on any of these services, to get started with the free 90 days offer, just reach out to your advisor. You can email sales at 10street.com. You know, that we'll get you, we'll get you where you need to be. And so let's take some questions. Okay, do we get notified when drivers upload docs to their DQF file? I'm just gonna let anybody take that. So yes, you can get notified. Um, there's a lot of customizations around notifications, but you can definitely um, select to be notified whenever documents are uploaded for a driver. Yeah, there's notifications that could come into your dashboard or you can have emails. So there's several different yeah. ways we can help there. Um, when you do a confirmation in Tele app, does this create an entirely different application or does it keep the same one? So that's going to keep the same app. You, um, I don't know if you remember, but if you saw there, it said updated. And so it's not actually generating a new app. It just updates the existing app. Okay. Great question. Yeah. And this is one about kind of what we were talking about earlier. What if they don't want to download Pulse or if there's a portal? She said she knows there's a portal view, but is that easy for the driver? So I'll I jump think, in. Yeah. I I know okay. for sure that um, as long as the driver has email, um, that it's still going to give them a very similar message uh, to to Pulse or a similar screen, especially if they're going to use it on a phone or a laptop or tablet. Uh, it's going to just send it to their email instead. So they would get a, a push notification if they were using Pulse, which is always nice and it's kind of trusted because that's an app you're using all the time. But it's always sent via email in the other case and with the link. And then it's just like she showed us, last name, date of birth, social security number. And uh, it's the exact same thing, just just like um, it would show on Pulse. Probably not as clean because I think Pulse looks really great, but it's still very easy to fill out on a laptop or tablet. Okay, there's a question here from somebody named Kath, who you knew as Kath Reedman. They are saying, hi, Casey, that they taught you. They are, you, were ta you taught them how to use 10th Street back in uh, Omaha in 2014. <laughs> so they said to say hi to you and they have a question about the quizzes. So if you, if the driver answers a question wrong, will it tell him or her the correct answer? 
the third party I'm using, oh, wow. uh, it just shows that it's incomplete. And um, and then they would have to watch the video again before they get to the next uh, section to ask the, the question. So it has to, and I have it set up with my third party that the driver has to answer the questions 100% uh, before it moves on to the next module. In my case, that, um, I'm not sure how the 10th Street it's, it's training works. Yeah, it's the same way with our content. And so um, if they miss the quiz question, it says that they got zero out of, they didn't get it correct and they have to read, go back and listen and read the material and get the question correct before they can move on to the next section. Okay. Here's another uh, question for Casey. Do you have the drug results automated into your process to put the driver on the road within six hours of arrival at orientation, if you don't mind sharing? Yeah, we're using PulseMD, uh, like you had showed uh, here a few minutes ago, where our third party um, is uh, Workforce QA, and uh, they are fully integrated to where we have the driver actually drug test before they arrive, and uh, we we will offer some travel assistance, and we won't do that unless the driver commits to the drug test and, and doing s at least a, a large portion of the training before we'll invest in that. But uh, yeah, we have the results that show up very, very quickly. Uh, Workforce QA, for the most part, um, their, their main provider is Quest, and Quest is huge out there, 2,500 locations. It's all shown right in and set up right through PulseMD, which is probably the most fluid uh, function, I think, that's in 10th Street, because drug screens can be a pain. You have to go to the third-party site. You have to uh, input all the driver's information. Well, based on using the PulseMD ordering view, you can just go in there, and it's pre-filled based on the driver's address. And if they're not in that address, you can type in the new zip code that they're in, and it shows you all the locations you can use. And you literally, it's two clicks away from there. Uh, you, you choose the location, and then you confirm that you want to use that location, and it is done. And the driver gets it immediately in the Pulse app or if they don't have the Pulse app, again, they get it immediately in their email, and that ECCF is ready for them to take it right to the clinic. It's it's beautiful. And then, of course, when the result is back, it goes right into Pulse MD results the view, uh, and you also get a notification from the notification bell uh, there to show you that that result is back, and it shows right in there beautifully with the MRO signature, and everything's uh, ready to go. Great, thank you for sharing that. Uh, do you have a new hire checklist that we could add our forms in and send all at one time versus individually assigning? Um, so I think yes. this is just up to you, or I'll just take this question. I think that's just totally up to you. You can you can create the, we call them courses actually. You can put as many classes in a course as you want. You can combine document uploader and tax forms and uh, anything, you know, confirmation IA all in one, all in one course if you want so it all goes out at one time or you can separate it into different courses as, as well however you like to send it that's totally customizable um, according to your needs and how your company operates and then you also can create a checklist view so to with your customization so that your recruiters or whoever um, is going through the process can review the checklist and driver facing checklist as well See. Again, looks like we can maybe take one more question here. Doctor, so that's the best question for your advisor. Unless Marilyn, you have anything to add to that or say to that? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, just just check in with your advisor and they can give you a good a good uh, proposal and put together. That will give you a better idea of how much this will cost. And so yes, all the things in blue are free for 90 days. So everything here that you see, driver pulls, that's free always. It's never gonna cost you anything. That's always gonna be free. 
confirmation intel app, doc uploader, forms capture, and the training library are the four things that will eventually incur a cost. Those are after 90 days though, and that's just up to what you guys, what you work out with your salesperson, but those are all free for 90 days. Um, I think about what we're at a good point for to stop everybody there's several thank yous um thank you so much to casey we appreciate your time i completely agree thank you for joining us um and i think we're gonna go ahead and end it here but i really appreciate everybody's time i know you guys have i know you guys are busy and it's a trying time right now so i really appreciate you getting on this phone call uh on this webinar rather and we're gonna send you a recording in about 24 hours so you can review at your leisure and you can share with others and uh, if you have any questions at all after we hang up, just make sure to write into your advisor or your account, manage, uh, account manager, and they will get you uh, the help that you need. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.